So you have a generic shooter project, and then you look on the marketplace, and you're like, Oh dang, look at that generic airdrop package. That is so sweet. I want that for my project. How do I implement that into generic shooter? Well, if you're asking that, this is the tutorial for you. So, in order to implement generic airdrop into generic shooter, you need to confirm that your generic shooter version is at least cathartic crouton or later. So if you drag out BP version from your generic shooter blueprint logic folder, I'll tell you very quickly what version you're on. And as you can see, I'm on cathartic crouton. If you're on butchering beagle or earlier, it's not going to work. Cathartic crouton was released around early 2016. So keep an eye out for that. Once you're sure that you're on cathartic crouton, next thing you need to do is go to your marketplace library tab and add the generic airdrop asset to your project. Once you've done this, in your content browser, you'll see a folder called add-ons under your generic shooter folder. And in the add-ons folder, you'll see airdrop. Now, the first thing you can do is delete the demo folder in the, in the airdrop add-ons folder because the demo folder is for people who are not implementing this into generic shooter who, and who are implementing this into, say, the first person blueprint example. Go ahead and delete this. And this will take some time to do. Shouldn't take too long. Go ahead and delete everything. All right. So now it's gone. No more demo folder. And we, we just don't need it. It's gone. Boom. All right. So now the next step is to take the airdrop weapon blueprint and convert it to a weapon type that generic shooter understands. Now this process is a little bit involved, but it's pretty easy. So if you ever get lost, rewind the video, follow it step by step, and you should be able to handle this without too much effort. So Let's open this up. And the very, very first thing we want to do before we do anything is to go to File, Reparent Blueprints. And we want to re reparent our airdrop weapon blueprint to BP Base Weapon. Not Base Weapon Instant Hit, not Base Weapon Projectile, but BP Base Weapon. Very important that it's BP Base Weapon. Once you've done this, in your components list, You'll see you have multiple meshes. Now we'll have 1p mesh underscore zero generated for us, and this is the mesh that I provide uh, as an example for this weapon. And we want to just go ahead and simply delete this. Boom. Now we need to set the meshes that generic shooter expects to be set, and that's the third person mesh and the first person mesh component. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a third person mesh, and on the skeletal mesh on the right choose our dropper mesh by just searching for dropper. I want to do the same thing for the first person mesh. Boom. File save. And that's done real easy, real simple. Now for the a bit more complicated part. So the first thing you need to do is in your base weapon event graph or in your airdrop weapon event graph that just derived from base weapon go down to your fire event and you should see something that looks like this it's on the bottom left of the event graph you, what you want to do is delete the fire node here and instead add a on server consumed ammo and make sure you choose the event on server consumed ammo and not the call function so event on server consumed ammo gives you one of these now you need to right click this and do an add call the parent function so that it calls all the base functionality that generic shooter offers and then tie this into this. So now anytime this weapon consumes ammo, it will drop an error package. Pretty simple. Go ahead and compile save. Now two more things you need to do. We need to replace these two or these three nodes here on this and branch. So go ahead and select these and delete. Now in order for in order for the drop marker to update itself in generic shooter, there's a few things we can add. The first and most important thing is 
whether or not we're equipped. So right click in here and search for is equipped. And so what this does is if the weapon is equipped, it will update the drop marker so that you can see whether or not your aim point is valid or not. Now, if you want to hide your drop marker when you don't have ammo, which is a pretty nice thing to do, that's a little bit more complicated, but if you don't want to do that, you can simply choose remove pin on this and node and simply only use these two inputs here. But to hide it if you don't have ammo for an airdrop, pretty easy. You need to do is you need to right click in here and get the current ammo in mag. Once we get the current ammo in mag, we need to check to see if this is greater than or equal to consumed consumed ammo per shot. So if it takes one round of fire and we have one round in our mag, we want to put this into our anode. And now the drop marker will only show if we have enough ammo to fire this airdropper. Cool. Now the next step, this is required, absolutely required, is to replace these holder nodes with a, the owning pawn variable. Now the holder variable is left over from the first person blueprint demo, and it basically stores who is holding this weapon. Now generic shooter has a different system for this, and it's called get owning pawn. So once we have a variable called get own or a reference to the owning pawn, we can simply replace the holder nodes here and just delete them like so. And there you have it. Now the work in the event graph is done. We can go ahead and compile and save this. Now on our variables on the left, you'll see we have two variables under demo. We can go ahead and delete these. They're no longer used. And now we need to set up the weapon so that it responds or it works better within the generic shooter system. A few examples of this is uh, we don't want the weapon to be able to reload. This airdropper has no reload functionality, so we should tell generic shooter, like, hey, this weapon cannot ever reload. To do that, on the left, if you mouse over the functions category, you'll see an override dropdown. Click this and you get a big list. But what we're looking for is can reload. So if we go through the top of the list, and for me, it goes even, it goes off the screen, off my stream screen that I'm recording here, but we can find it. Can reload. It's about middle, bottom of the list here. We open this, and once we open this, we get, see a function that says can reload, and it's returning parent can reload. We can simply delete this and return false. This way, this weapon can never reload. Now we need to do the same thing with aim down sight. It doesn't make any sense for this weapon to aim down sight. So what we can do is you can go to functions override and look for can ADS. Now for me, it's on the top of the list off my recording screen, but it's there. So we choose that and we do the same thing. Delete the parent call and just return false. Now, for can fire, we want to change this a little differently. Uh, when the weapon can fire, we need to say that, hey, it can only fire if the drop location is valid. Otherwise, it can't fire. To do that, we override once again, and we look for can fire. This is in the middle bottom, kind of close to can reload. Now, for this, instead of deleting the can fire node, we want to and this. So... It does all the base weapon stuff of whether or not it can fire, meaning is it equipped, is it in the right state, blah, 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 blah. And we'll output, connect the output of this AND node to the return node. But the second input for this AND node will simply be uh, drop location is valid. And you can find this in the variable list, or you can right click and look for drop location is valid. This way, it can only fire when the drop location is valid. That way you can't use ammo on an invalid location. At least not without breaking something. All right, so now that that's done, uh, all this is done, we need to set up some class defaults. And by that, I mean, we need to change the slot type from primary to something else. Otherwise, it'll take the spot of the rifle. I like using special because 
Uh, I like replacing the grenade, the grenade and rocket launchers with the airdropper. But if you want to use a different slot type, you totally can. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off automatic firing under config firing because this shouldn't be an automatic firing weapon. At least not in my design. Now, I'm going to go down to config ammo and I want this to only have one round of ammo. So we just set all these fields to one, which means it has a max ammo of one. It could only have one ammo in its mag. And that's real simple. Now I want to remove the muzzle flash by just removing the muzzle flash particle. I want to remove the fire sound by clearing the fire sound. I want to uncheck use this crosshair because there's no need for a crosshair with this. I want to change display name to airdropper. And that should do it. That should. Oh, and one other thing you could do if you, this is all, this is optional. This is preference is if you go to config animation, I think the pistol animations work better than the rifle animation. So I'm going to choose the animation type from rifle to pistol. Then when I compile, save. And now this weapon's ready for use. I can drag this into the world and you'll see that if you drag an airdrop weapon into the world, it has the green marker around it, but that's fine. Uh, that will hide itself on spawn rather quickly. Now, I'm just going to leave this here. And if I hit play, the first thing you're going to notice is there's going to be some red text that says airdrop weapon created, but level has no airdrop managers. If you ever see this, it means while your airdrop weapon is working correctly, you don't have any airdrop manager systems, which manage the helicopters and the things that get dropped. So to do that, or to add an airdrop manager, Find the airdrop manager blueprint in the generic shooter add-ons airdrop folder and simply drag it to the world and you'll get one of these. And what this does is it acts as a center point for all airdrops, meaning all airdrops are going to happen uh, a set height and start from a set distance away from this point, but they'll still travel to wherever the player determines. Better example explanation or more details of this is uh on the right side of this you'll see that this manager has various properties called drop height and helo spawn radius so the drop height of all packages is going to be this unit here 5000 uh units above the manager so if the manager is way up in the sky the drop height is going to be 5000 units higher than the manager so that's why the center point for the manager is kind of important, but as long as it's anywhere near the middle of your map, you should be fine. Now the helo spawn radius, which is currently set to 10,000 units, uh, will spawn the helicopter 10,000 units in any direction away from the manager. That's where it'll start, and that's how far it'll travel to leave as well. Now you have two other parameters here. You have your angle check and your clear sky check. If your angle check is on, it'll make sure that your terrain is, or your aim point needs to be relatively flat. You can adjust the tolerance of flatness by lowering the valid dot up angle. If you set this to one, it has to be perfectly flat. 0.85 works pretty well. And the clear sky check, what this does is it draws a line straight up and sees if it hits anything. And if it doesn't hit anything, then it's called having a clear sky or no cover. And that's a safe place to drop it. You can disable this if you want to allow dropping of packages inside buildings, but the crate might get stuck on something and that's up to you. So now that we have our airdrop manager here, we should be able to pick up our airdrop Four, weapon three, and summon an airdrop. One. Do, 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 do. Come over here, pick up our airdrop. Now switch to it using the, the special weapon key, which is three. And you see here's our marker, and now if we left click, airdrop inbound. you'll see that our airdrop is inbound, and here's our crate. There you go, airdrop imp implemented. Drop package retrieved. Now currently, you have to handle your own behavior for what happens when you pick up the package, but uh, that's beyond implementation. That's purely, you can do whatever you want there. 
Now, this should also work on the network. So if I go ahead and start up two clients here, as you can see, I have player on both teams. I can walk over to this as the client and drop a package drop in front of the server. As you can see, the server sees it, client sees it. There we go. There's a box. There's a box. So, drop package retrieved. Everything works. Uh, there you go. So that's how you implement the airdrop weapon. Now you don't have to use. You know, you don't have to make the airdrop weapon a pickup. You can give it to the player through spawning it through, like how you would grant any other weapon to the player or any other means. And you can also, if you're a bit more programmatically inclined, you can call attempt drop on the airdrop manager uh, without a weapon. So if you wanted to level script an airdrop, you can do that completely, uh, completely fine and easy to do that. All you need to do is in your level blueprint, find your blue, find your airdrop manager and call attempt drop and it'll attempt to drop wherever you put your drop point in as so hopefully that works for you and thank you for checking out generic airdrop with generic shooter